Hey everybody, learning objective number two. And for those of you listening to this in uh, November of 2023, uh, this is your last video before, before counting, uh, before you go on reading break. So be safe, be happy, and uh, we will talk soon. Okay, until then, account for interest-bearing liabilities with principal due on maturity. So if you remember that note receivable that we had, uh, in an earlier chapter, this is the same thing, except instead of us receiving uh, the payment and the interest, this is us borrowing uh, money, possibly you know paying with a piece of equipment, paying for a piece of equipment with a note. Uh, so we're on the flip side. We're the people that are owing the money. All right, so these are going to be interest-bearing liabilities, which means that in addition to repaying the principal, we also need to pay interest. And so um, we might have things like single pay principal payment due on maturity, like our notes payable. That's when we pay the interest and the principal on maturity. Uh, we might also have it where we have principal installment payments, like bank loans and mortgages. So if you think about like people, when they have mortgages at the beginning, they are paying back a very little amount of the principal and a large portion of the interest. And then over time, that same payment, you know, say it is $2,500. Um, at the beginning, maybe it's 2,000 to interest ugh, and 500 to principal. And then eventually um, towards the end of the, the mortgage, it would be more like 500 to interest and 2,000 to principal. All right, but we are gonna be paying attention to single principal payment on maturity. So just like our notes receivable, we'll be looking at the flip side notes payable. All right, so um, friendly reminder, this is a promise to pay a specified amount either at a fixed future date or it might be on demand. This is often used instead of accounts payable and is a formal written promise which provides a stronger legal claim than say accounts payable. This normally has an interest rate attached and a fixed annual rate, and um, could be issued for varying uh, periods of time. If it is due within one year of the financial statement date, then we classify it as current liabilities. And um, really, I need to just, just really reinforce, this is like notes receivable. We just owe them now instead of receiving them. So let's take a look at an example. HSBC Bank agrees to lend $250,000 on March 1st if regional manufacturing signs a $250,000 4% four-month bank loan maturing on July 1st, and the interest is payable at maturity. The entry made by regional manufacturer upon receipt of cash and after the note signed would be... All right, take a pause, and I will see you soon. All right. So we are uh, regional manufacturing, and let's see, this is March 1st. We are going to debit our cash account for the $250,000 that we received after signing the loan, and we are going to credit a note payable for the same amount, and our description would be, let's see, um, signed and received uh, 250K loan from HSBC. Okay, cool. All right, that's awesome. Let's go back to the slides. All right, so now we have the same question, um, except Regional manufacturing has a March 31st year end, and then uh, they also have a maturity of the loan on uh, July 1st, and they had to accrue it until the note was due and must pay face value. So we, hint, hint, might have a couple different entries here because when we are doing our, our entries, we need to accrue up until our financial statement dates. Um, and then we also have to do something when things are, are settled. So give this video a pause, and when I see you back, people, 
we are we are rounding out this week. So time flies when you're having fun or yeah. All right, give it a shot and we'll talk soon. All right, so remember we already recorded the loan on March 1st. So now our next entry is going to be on March 31st and we need to accrue for some interest here. So let us make that journal entry here. We are going to debit our interest expense and we are going to credit our either accrued interest or you can book a right to um, the interest payable. Okay, interest, let's see, did I spell that right? Yes, okay, cool. So the amount is going to be for the total amount of the loan, 250, one, two, three, let's see, times by 0.04%, and then times by, one twelfth, because we only had one month out of the 12 go by. So 833.33 is what we will record, and that is to record one month of interest on loan from HSBC. Cool. All right, next one, July 1st. We got to settle this up. So I, I know right away that my cash is going to go out the door, and my total cash going out would be the principal and the interest. So let's figure out what the interest will be. So you can do this in two entries or one. Um, for simplicity purposes, I am going to do it, quote, the long way, just to really show the two steps of this. So also on July 1st, I am going to basically do this exact same entry, but I'm gonna be doing it for different months, let's see. Uh, April, May, June, yes, three months. So I'm lazy, I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna go for three months, fabulous. And then just update here and this is for three months. No, oh, sorry guys, I know, you're probably screaming. I know, it's below, you're right, I'm sorry, I got it. Okay, here we go, three months. I'm gonna keep you on your toes. All right, uh, so now we, what we've done here is we've reflected, we have the one month of interest. Cool, that's what's gonna hit um, the uh, income statement for one month for March 31st year end. And then we have um, this one on here for uh, the next, hmm, would it be? Well, they didn't tell us that they had quarters. So We'll just leave it at that. So then we have the rest of this interest um, accrued right up until the day that we are gonna pay this. Uh, so now we have a total of accrued interest sitting in our little T account, sitting on our financial statements of $3,333.33. We also still owe the amount that we originally borrowed. Sometimes students forget about this one. Don't forget about this one. The bank will not forget about this one. Okay. So we need to reverse out the fact that we are going to pay our note payable. We have to reverse out that we are going to pay our uh, accrued interest or interest payable. And so this was our $250,000 that we originally borrowed. And this is this stuff from March and the stuff right up until the day that we settled. And that means we better be writing a check or sending an electronic funds transfer for $253,000. Sorry, 253-333.33. Let's just, let's get some rounding out there because who doesn't love a little rounding? Okay, good. Uh, and I mean rounding, I mean like decimals. Okay, and what's this? To record payment of HSBC bank loan and interest at maturity. All right, people. Thank you so, so, so much. Again, be safe, uh, have a great break, and don't be a liability. Oh, groan. Okay, sorry, I had to. Okay, okay, thank you. Take care. Talk soon. Bye.